Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center and we've got a very special guest here today. Andrew Keel is one of the designers in the Kershaw team and we're here to show you some of 2024's new releases from Kershaw. Andrew, welcome. Good to see you, David. Let's get into it. All right, so first off, uh, we're gonna start off with a couple of, uh, of automatics mm -hmm. uh, that you brought here to show us. Um, we'll start with one of your big successes from last year. We've got yeah. some new variants of ye old live wire. Your first OTF. Yeah. Um, this one right here, I'm gonna give you guys some prices and such, uh, but keeping in mind at the time we're filming this, uh, the prices are still preliminary. Most current up-to-date prices, by the time you're watching this video, you should be able to order this stuff. So we'll have links in the description. But here is the new double-edged version of the live wire. Aluminum handles, just like normal. Uh, Magna cut blade steel. Very, very cool. Price on this should be around the $240 to $250 mark. Tell us a little bit about um, the live wire. I guess we talked about it a little bit last year mm -hmm. uh, when you would have brought it. Um, but obviously it's been kind of a runaway success. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, yeah, it's been, I think this year it is our most successful knife, which is wow. incredibly exciting. For an automatic um, especially, that's, yeah. that's big news. Yeah, oh, it's, it's amazing, really awesome. great for us. I think the three key things for this, um, one for all the live wires, just the, the action on it is really stand out just in how like easy and smooth it is to operate. On this one in particular, I love the double edge blade shape. I feel like for an OTF, that's like, Perfect. Such a natural oh, thing, yeah, 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 yeah. for it's sure. Like, oh, it, we need to have one of those in the lineup. And then we have a black PVD finish on that blade too, which is really, really nice. It's already really good with the Magna Cut steel, but adding that coating on there is gonna even further enhance that blade. Sure. So, yeah. so Magna Cut, of course, is already stain resistant, but it's very tough and holds an edge a long time too. It's really a kind of a phenomenal steel. Um, so th I know this is a matte Diskin design. Yes. Um, did you guys, just some, some insider information yeah, if, you don't, sure. if you don't mind sharing. Um, did you guys go to him with the design uh, or did he come to you guys with it? Um, who designed the internals if you don't mind me asking, like the actual automatic mechanism? Were you guys looking for a designer like Matt to put a cool wrapper over your engineering or was it more of a collaborative effort? Yeah, that, if definitely, that makes yeah, absolutely makes sense. Very much a collaborative effort. You have Matt, you have Jim, my boss, you have our R&D guy all three of them working together on it cool. and working like individually and coming back together mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. like over the course of several years. Like it mm -hmm. took us a probably good like two to three years. So definitely a collaboration and we're really happy to work with Matt on that. Yeah, and it came out really nice. The pocket clip works. It looks a little little kinked, a little crooked, but it actually sits in the pocket really nicely. And it's um, reversible. And it is reversible, absolutely. It works just as well lefty or righty. The whole thing, of course, very ambidextrous in its utility. Very cool, very cool. Uh, we've got another version here to look at as well, uh, the carbon fiber version. Uh, pricing on this one, uh, we think is gonna be about the same actually as this double-edged, but it might be a little bit higher. That's, we're still, yeah, stay that, tuned. This, this is the one we have the least idea about on pricing as we're, as we're filming this. But it should be comparable. Yeah, yeah. shouldn't be too far yeah. off. Uh, Magna cut steel on this as well in the double-edged, or yep. the single-edged uh, profile. Yep, this is the classic live wire blade. And you've got stone wash flats with beautiful satin grinds on there. I love, love that finish. And I think that pairs really nicely with the carbon fiber, mm -hmm. having that more like refined, elegant look on this knife. It's um, a gentleman's OTF. Yeah. yeah. What I love, and then we've got aluminum on the back. One of the really fun things about this construction for an OTF is mm -hmm. that you have this kind of, we call it like a tub in the back that holds all the internals. But then you have this panel up front um, and you can play around with a lot of different materials mm -hmm. on that. Uh, and so we're starting to explore that more. And this is kind of our first venture into into that. So we're really excited about that and stoked to bring that to you guys. Very nice, very nice. Uh, next up, we'll stick with uh, autos for one more second. Uh, obviously you guys have been very successful and very well known for the launch series. Yeah. You know, your push button automatics, which, uh, you know, I, I still think the launch one is the best one, but I'm just very, just very fond of that knife. You guys have a ton of great knives. It's a classic, for sure. A ton of great knives in the, uh, the launch lineup. And we got a new one here. Yes. Uh, which I think looks pretty darn killer. Uh, this is the 19, the launch 19, uh, CPM 154 blade steel, which is kind of the, uh, the the baseline standard for the launch series. Yep. Great steel. It is. 3.3 uh, inches on the blade, kind of an exaggerated clip point, and this should be mm -hmm. around the 165 to $170 amount uh, when these are available. 
Yeah. Tell us, tell us a little bit about this. Really happy. Uh, yeah, really with this design. Handle, incredibly comfortable. You got a really generous blade choil on there so that you can get a pretty good choke up grip on that. Um, I like that you called it an exaggerated clip point. I'm gonna start <laughs> using that. Uh, it's, uh, it's really nice like how low the tip is on mm -hmm. that and it's just a very, a very well, It's just such a blade. long straight clip on it too, yeah. I'm really happy with how that turned out. I think it gives it like a really rugged look and I'm glad that we used this um, earth brown G10 on there well. Mm -hmm. I think that mm -hmm. pairs well with that style blade shape, a little bit more rugged in vibe. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it kind of reminds me a little bit of some like old school hunting knife shapes yes. in a way. So that that's a cool pairing that, that material. Trying to pair some there. like some old notes, but with like, obviously it's a push button automatic, has a lot of yeah. black. And, yeah, there's nothing know. vintage about this. Right, right, right. <laughs> um, but trying to bring some of that like old school rugged into it. Yeah. Uh, we've got a Cerakote, a black Cerakote finish on the blade that we've then ground away to give you those satin grinds. Really nice high contrast blade. For sure. If you look on the back too, we've got a deep carry pocket clip there titanium tube spacer, overall, just super comfortable in hand. I'm really excited to get my hands on one and carry it. It does feel really good and it's, it's. I, I, I said my launch one thing in jest there at the beginning because it, I think it is a ph phenomenal oh, yeah, knife yeah, and it's great. one that I have carried quite often. And this is one of the first that feels like it might stand a chance of Ooh, dethroning the launch uh, one for me. I, I like I, that. I, I really like the dagger versions yeah. uh, you came out with uh, this past year with the, I'm terrible with the numbers no, in, the you're, in the launch so many. lineup. This is I really the 19th am. one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the Magna Cut, uh, the the kind of fat yep. dagger one. Yep. The McCarty. Which which number is that? 17, I think. We'll have to check that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like I'm, the gray one. Right? I'm a with fan the G10 of G10 inserts, right? Uh, yeah. Well, the black with the G10, or no, sorry, the Micarta insert. Yes, yeah. that's, not the, that's not the 17. Okay. Uh, that's, that's a different number. It's the 15, I believe. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, I love that knife. <laughs> the, I, I'm a fan of a lot of the yeah. launch stuff. So yeah, didn't, didn't mean to offend anyone by saying that the, the first one they did, they should have stopped there. That's not at all what I was <laughs> implying. This, this is really cool. So the handle uh, here is sort of similar to, uh, again, forgetting the number, the, the cleaver version. The 14. Uh, the 14, yeah. which had a similar kind of split front handle. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, um, we wanted something that was similar in design to that, and I was really excited about that. I think, you know, I think I might be wrong in saying this, but it feels like the cleaver, you know, fad has kind of come and is starting to go a, little, a bit. little bit on the wane. Um, yeah, yeah. But we, and I've definitely designed, like, I've probably done, like, I'll probably, like, close to 10 cleaver knives by this point. Well, I mean, shoot, we've got more to look at here. Yeah, we got one on the, on the table here. So, um, but I, on that one in particular, I love the design, mm -hmm. but I loved the handle more than the blade, okay. personally. Uh -huh. Launch 14 is still a great knife, so no, yeah. no shade yeah. there. Um, but it was really fun to get to do a similar handle design mm -hmm. with a new blade shape, and I really think this works. And it's actually, it's essentially just two pieces of, of material oh, yeah. joined in the yeah, center. Yeah, there's no yeah. like liner yeah. behind it or yeah. whatever, yeah. Yeah, which yeah. is really fun. Um, and that was, we talked about this with the 14 too, mm -hmm. but initially the inspiration there was that all of the, all the functional geometry, the spring, the button lock, all that is up here. Mm -hmm. So you have room to do whatever you want on to the back play, end. Be exactly. a little fun, yeah. Um, so that's kind of nice. Takes a little bit of weight out of it too. So no, it's, this is a sweet, sweet aesthetic and a sweet shape. I mean, it fits in my hand quite nicely, even without getting up there into the, uh, the finger choil. I love this kick up here at the back. Yeah. That's a detail that, that I just, happen to appreciate on a, on designs that utilize it. And then I can get up there for that too. Yeah. I love it. I'm so, so stoked. If it dethrones the launch one for you, let me know. We'll I, see. Uh, I'm, I'm like an avowed dyed in the wool drop yeah. point guy. Yeah. So this, you know, we'll see. it would take a lot for uh, an exaggerated clip point to uh, take over. But we'll see. <laughs> yeah. You never know. You never know. We'll see. All right. Uh, getting out of the autos now. Uh, this one I think is, is the highlight. Yes. There's, some, there all, there's a lot of good stuff here, but this one right here, I think especially rises above the rest, um, especially when you find out what the price on this is probably going to be. Again, everything's still preliminary. This is the Bel Air, mm -hmm. a manual crossbar locking knife. You guys call it the Dura Lock. Yep. Um, Magna Cut blade, mm -hmm. just like a 16th of an inch over that three inch mark, aluminum handles, reversible deep carry clip, and this should be hitting at a street price of right around 150 bucks. And let me tell you folks, it's excellent. It feels great, the action is great. You got that nice thin slicey blade. Tell us about it. Um, yeah, of the knives here, this is for sure, I'm like, so. You're real stoked on yeah, this Yeah, like, I'm a little too excited. Like I should have like taken a minute before we it's started right. shooting. To, but um, no, I really, the size for me, I think is perfect, that perfect EDC size. You've got a full flat 
blade mm -hmm. with a um, like a whatever like modified reverse tonto, like very utilitarian blade shape there, which is nice. Magna cut is great. Mm -hmm. um, you might have mentioned this, but this is made in the USA. It's oh, I didn't our, mention that. Yeah, That's right. Made in our factory yes. in Tualatin, Oregon, mm -hmm. uh, which I'm very excited about. Um, that's a that's a really big deal, and I'm really stoked about that. Aluminum handle scales with a Cerakote finish, um, and I think the Cerakote gives it a really it gives it a nice like kind of grippy feel to it. And there's a couple other. Yeah, it's it's, it's kind of chalky is the wrong word because it's not that, but it's yeah. got a little bit of a feel to it. It feels it's not good. slick at all. It's a nice it's a nice texture. It feels really really good. In and the I like the color too. It's kind of gray, but not kind of tan, but not. It's subtle. Yeah. It's not just another black knife. Yeah. And I, or a gray knife even yeah. for that matter. I. I like it's it. like a warmer gray, which yeah. I I am really drawn to that color. Yeah. I really like quite a bit. And uh, it's going to fit in with you know everybody's pocket dump out there, like it, no, <laughs> for yeah. the folks that that like that sort of thing. I dig it. And we've got we actually have um, so that Cerakoted, We also the tops of the the button here on this Duralock are also Cerakoted, mm -hmm. along with the tube spacers with a vortex bronze Cerakote. So it's like a like a deep like bronze, yeah, deep yeah. brown. Not um, quite black. Yeah. Not quite black, yeah. bringing that warmth up in, into it. the knife. So I'm really excited about that. We've got a deep carry clip on the back there, which yeah, is... For the folks that like a deep carry, this is quite deep carry. I mean, yeah. hold that up. That is definitely going to stay nice and subtle in the pocket. And it has recessed pocket clip screws. I think, I'm not positive, but I'm fairly certain this is our first US made knife to have a deep carry clip with recessed screws. Okay. Which is a, that's also like just kind of becoming industry standard. Mm -hmm. So I'm really mm -hmm. stoked about that. Um, but yeah, just overall, really, really happy with this knife. Um, I've added some notches on the bottom here, some jimping there to help you kind of like even, I have pretty small hands, but if you have larger hands, I think that'll help you get a good like at least three finger grip on there so mm -hmm. you're not slipping off the back. Yeah, I mean, it didn't feel at all like, I was not at all worried about yeah. my hold on the knife when I was uh, kind of flipping it around and, and holding it and such. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's solid. And then uh, the last like detail I want to note is that it's got ball bearing washers on the inside, so you get a really nice um, drop shot. Which that feels like something that's also kind of become like not industry standard, but it definitely seems like a preference. A lot of folks really prefer enthusiasts. that. Yeah, for sure. Um, so we want to it's just, offer that. Yeah, it's like friction free, glidey feeling as opposed to crossbar locks that use like a bronze washer are still exceptionally smooth, yes. but aren't quite the same. Like this is, it's not, smooth's not the right adjective. It's like friction free, yeah. essentially, yeah, is yeah, what yeah. I always come down to. So just is, really nice. It's really fun. So this is the Bel Air. Uh, we're so excited to bring this to you guys. Yeah, I mean, there, there's honestly not a single detail that I can find fault with on this knife. It's, wow. it's, a, it's a winner. Thanks, dude. That, I, that no, I'm serious, I'm serious. That means, yeah, a lot. Excellent, very cool. Um, up next, let's keep. Uh, we've got a couple more of your uh, your Dura locks here. Sure. Um, another new variant from your other uh, yep. great success from uh, this past year. New version of the Iridium. Yeah. Um, so this is yeah, a this is an Iridium with a reverse Tonto blade shape. Um, really stoked about this. I loved the original Iridium blade mm -hmm. shape too. It was something kind of new and different. Um, but what's nice is you can't beat the functionality of a reverse Tonto. Um, and if I mean, drop point's pretty good. Oh, yeah. right, right, right. Or exaggerated <laughs> clip. Uh, but I think um, for me, reverse Tonto is probably like my favorite blade shape. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, there was like a period at Kershaw where I was like banned from doing them because I've done like so many, they were like, okay, you got to do something different. But they let me do one on this. Well, I mean, the utility of them is is great. I mean, the astonishing, really it's, it's got so much power in the blade. You've got the precision of the tip on right. that kind of shape as well, so. They're super useful. I just, I just can't resist giving you a little bit of a hard time. That's oh, yeah. <laughs> Please continue. Uh, but yeah, no, they asked me to do a reverse Tonto on this one, um, and I'm really happy with that. Because if you're going to do it, go to the guy that does it, right? Well, I, you know. <laughs> um, I actually, I'm really excited. Jim designed a knife. I don't know if I'm supposed to say this on there. Jim has a reverse Tonto knife in the works mm -hmm. that looks freaking amazing, and I can't wait for it to come out. You guys are going to be I don't think you've, you've revealed any uh, any proprietary information. I feel like it's pretty vague. Reverse Tonto knife. I Everyone like knows pretty... that knife companies are working on, on this knives. Stuff. I think that's, okay. you're safe. You're Anyways, safe. <laughs> stay tuned. It's a really good design. Um, so back to this guy. It's an Iridium. All the, the handle back, it's the, all the same. Um, colors are different, um, otherwise it's the same. Yeah, aluminum handles, yep. ball bearings in the pivot. Yep. That same kind of friction-free action that we just talked about. D2 blade steel. Yep, deep carry clip. Um, really, really nice. I actually kind of like, so if you're if you're into the drop shut, one, I think there's a little bit more meat on this blade than the or original. Yeah, makes and sense. And so you get, I think, an even better drop shut. Um, but I've definitely heard a couple people say that like, hey, I really like the Iridium. But I wish it had a like I wish it had a 
reverse tonto blade. So there you go. There you go. Here we, it is. We got it. Yep, high yeah. flat grind on it. I mean, it, yeah. it's it's a powerful looking blade for sure. And yeah. price on it should be uh, just about the same as the original, about sixty five bucks. Yep, uh, for street price here. Yep, nice. Yeah, really stoked about that. Uh, next up, let me uh, flip pages over here. Pardon me. Um, this is the layup. Yeah. So a new, uh, this is gonna be a more affordable uh, everyday carry, about $54, $55, we think. Um, tell us a little bit about this. I'm really excited about this because we actually have a patent coming out with this knife. Okay. Um, so we just started doing like the Duralock style knives um, and we have done assisted open knives for a long time. I feel like that's like Kershaw made their name in assisted mm -hmm. opening knives. Mm -hmm. And so this knife marries the two together in a way that is unique uh, and we have a patent pending on it. So that's really exciting. Cool. Um, so yeah, and you've got, you get the lock, which is nice because you have, keeps your fingers out of the way of the blade uh, and then it's assisted. So it opens like super snappy, nice and fast. Um, so we're hoping um, that that'll really like, will take off and people who like the Duralock will like the assistant. People that like the assistant will be like, oh, that's kind of different than a liner lock or a frame lock. I want to mm -hmm. try that out. And it's, it provides a, uh, a, a way for lefties to get on it, get in on it yeah. too, since it's a fully ambidextrous system as exactly. well. Exactly, and um, you mentioned this in a video the other day, but it also, the clip is reversible, so it's truly ambidextrous. Excellent, nice. excellent. Um, uh, D2 steel yep. on this, uh, length about 3.4 inches, yep. high flat grind, exaggerated clip point, we'll say. It's nice, I, I, the handle too, even if, um, even if the mechanisms and all that doesn't, you don't really care about that. I think the design of the knife I like because it feels like a good work knife. Like mm -hmm. it fills mm -hmm. the hand really well. Yeah. Of course. It fills the hand well. And the blade I think also lends itself towards that. I like the texture uh, on the uh, injection molded piece here too. It's got yeah. like a real fine orange peel to it. And so that's gonna give you texture without traction, if that makes sense. Without, without feeling too like sticky or rough or anything like that. Yeah. And that, that is a great blade shape blade shape. I mean, that is just going to slice. Or is that actually a drop point, actually? There's there a hint of, a, is there a hint of like curve? In between, a, there's oh, a curve there is sure. just a hint of curve to that. Yeah. I, I apologize. This is not an exaggerated clip point. It is a drop point. Yeah. It just went up in my book a little bit. There you go. There you go. Um, <laughs> yeah, so the assist is, ooh, got to be a little careful with it. Oh, look at that. That's fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it does run on bearing washers. So, one of the things that I like about this, and I don't, this is another one, a lot of times I feel like I say things on camera and I'm like, I don't know if I'm supposed to say this or not. <laughs> I think from a, I don't know from a warranty standpoint, we can endorse like changing your knife, so to speak, but this, I've tested it. And if you take the, the torsion bar out, like the assisted mechanism out of it, it still, it'll perform just like a. So you can de-assist the knife de and it'll still it, be good to go. It, it works good. It mm -hmm. works really well. I've played with other, assisted um, crossbar lock style knives. And when you de-assist them, a lot of times it Sometimes feels, it doesn't always work Sometimes so it doesn't well, work, yeah. but on this one, I think it might. Again, as a company, we're not encouraging As a company, you to do that. he's not saying this is a thing you, could, you should do. In fact, you may void your warranty if you do it. But, but I have tried it. It's out there. It, it's out there, so cat's out of the bag. I like that. I like how thin that blade is too. I mean, this is just, it's got, a, it's got plenty of reach and it doesn't feel dainty and yet that is a slicey, yeah. slicey knife. Oh yeah, a nice tall grind panel. You got a really good edge on that too. Fantastic. Yeah. Excellent. So that's the layup. Nice. Uh, next up. Do we get the price on that guy? Oh uh, yeah, should be about 54, 55 bucks I think cool. uh, when, when that lands. Uh, next up, speaking of the, uh, the pocket folding cleaver. There you go. Uh, this is the Wharf. Uh, this is gonna be quite affordable. This should be about 29 bucks, less than 30 anyway. Um, for this little bad boy. So the story here is if you guys remember, we did, I think it was the first cleaver that I ever did uh, with Kershaw, it was called the Static. Um, I, I loved that knife. It was like one of the first ones I did that mm -hmm. had bearing washers, that had killer action, mm -hmm. really, really great, great knife. Um, and but I think the price point on that was a little bit higher because it's like steel frame lock. Mm -hmm. I think it had mm -hmm. D2 steel, just, you know, a little bit more going on there. I can see some of the same kind of lines yeah. working their way into so this design. When I worked on this, I took literally like the same, like this circle in here around mm -hmm. the pivot geometry and like the choil and all that. I literally like flipper and everything, like copy and pasted that in. And then I changed the blade shape and right. I changed the handle. So it's still like, it's unique from the static, don't worry guys. But uh, uh, but it, I really, really liked how the static felt in that in that core of the knife. Sure. So I wanted that to you be to brought that. into this one yeah, as yeah. well. Um, I also shifted the jimping a little bit further forward so when you choke up on it, you can kind of really get your fingers where you need to. You've got contoured glass-filled nylon handle scales right there with a light gray color, steel liners underneath. 
Um, so it should feel really comfortable in hand. Nice. That's the Wharf. Yeah, about a three inch blade, eight CR steel yep. on it. To me, I think the, the handle is the real kind of triumph of, of this knife. And I don't use that term lightly. I mean, it is, it's harder and harder to do a small, smaller knife handle well, I think. And this thing just hits my hands at least in so many of the right spots. I mean, you've got just enough curvature to give yourself a little bit more feel in the hand, yet it's neutral enough. I think a lot of different hand sizes can use it. The controllability of the blade as a result of the, sh the handle shape, I think is quite good. Thanks, man. That means yeah. a lot. I'm really happy with how it turned out too. I yeah, really like the handles on there. Very, very nice. That's uh, Yeah, that's the wharf. Excellent. Uh, next up, we've got the Scour stainless steel frame lock here. Mm -hmm. Uh, price on this should be about 40 bucks, maybe 41. HCR blade about 3.3 inches on this one for the, uh, the bullet points of the specs right there. What's really nice about this knife is that you have, it's a pretty good sized blade, um, but it's so slim if you look at it from like the top down. It's mm -hmm. really slim, it's just gonna disappear in your pocket. You got a deep carry clip with recessed screws. So it's something that in my hand like feels like a big knife, but when you're carrying it, you're not gonna notice that it's sure. a big knife. Sure, sure. Um, also really love the, on the blade, you have like a nice thumb ramp here that gives you some good good purchase on there and a pretty tall high grind panel to give you a good edge. Indeed, indeed. Uh, this is an assisted knife? That is correct. Yes. Yep, it's an assisted frame lock. So your classic torsion bar, yep. spring assist. Very on much it. like yep. classic Kershaw. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, so hollow grind on this. Yes. Um, yeah, reversible clip, I mean it's, it's kind of similar playbook that you guys kind of do so well. Um, yeah, it's just it's just working from your classic recipes in a slightly new shape, I think. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. Yeah, very cool. Uh, next up, uh, Sanctum. Keeping the uh, affordable train running, this uh, the Sanctum, as you mentioned, should be about 38, 39 bucks. Uh, steel on this again, HCR, about a three inch blade with that nice modified Warncliffe profile mm -hmm. going on. Uh, assisted frame lock here as well. Yep, uh, we talked about it. I think same principle that you have in the um, the reverse Tonto blades is that you have that kind of low point, gives you really, really good utilitarian edge. You've got a nice grind panel on there. Um, I really like the handle shape on this too. Really comfortable and very dynamic as mm -hmm, well, mm -hmm. uh, which is nice. You've got a really interesting backspacer in here as well, um, which is kind of cool and gives you a lanyard hole in the back, which is super, super fun. And yeah. That's a nice integration there, yeah. Yeah, no, overall, I feel like um, I feel like there's some handles where I'm like, oh, the handle really speaks to me, or some, like, the blade really speaks to me. But on this one, I think it's, like, the complete, the whole of it is really mm -hmm. beautiful, mm -hmm. and I really love. It also so, reminds uh, me a little bit of, and I'm going to forget the number of it, one of the launch models ooh. with kind of a similar blade shape here. We'll put a picture and a, a name of it here in, uh, in post so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, so it's almost like a budget alternative to, to yeah. one of those. Maybe the 13. Was it the one that had like this really flat blade edge? Yeah. And yeah, kind yeah. of the gnarly like handle yeah. behind it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the launch 13. We'll make, we'll find out whether we're right or wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so that, that could be a, a nice budget alternative to, uh, to that particular Absolutely. model. Uh, that was the first thing it, it kind of reminded me of just a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, last but certainly not least, the Hell Attack or Heel Attack. Heel attack, I think, I don't know. Maybe, maybe <laughs> you can get that up on the screen as well. Um, about 41 or 42 bucks, I think. Um, again, like I said, this this should be about what the pricing is gonna be, but things can of course change. We're filming this last year when you're watching this. Uh, so, uh, but an eight CR blade, three and a quarter inches. Uh, actually, that kind of reminds me of one of the launch blades a little bit too. Um, we'll put a picture of that one up here. Yeah. Um, really cool little blade shape though. Uh, I really like the thumb ramp on this guy. I feel like that gives you a really good, like I said before, really good purchase. I also, the blade choil on this is really good. It's gonna be awesome if you're resharpening this guy, mm -hmm. uh, which 8CR like you probably will. Um, and then we've got the a nice wraparound deep carry clip here in the back as well. So that you guys started the doing that on the, uh, the ZT lineup. Mm -hmm. um, and so you're bringing that into the, the more uh, budget oriented mm -hmm. offerings. Awesome. And we did that awesome. on the covalent and the monitor as well. Those were the That's two. That's right. Yeah, other two yeah. Duralocks I forgot about those. I forgot about uh, that, that integration on those. On those. Yep. Yes, 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 yes. I got you. Um, yeah, so no, really nice. Love the lanyard hole in this too. Really nice detail. I feel like this knife has a lot of nice, really fun details. You got this little over travel stop right there. Um, yeah, and really nice tube spacers as well. So that is the heel attack. I think like the blade geometries on on all of these are going to be uh, going to be quite nice. I mean, this one, the what's the name of this one again? Scour. The, uh, Scour. I mean, those are just 
user blades all around. Oh, absolutely. They're going to slice all day. Well, not all day. They're ECR. You, you will need to hone them, yeah. but that's fine. But they're um, easy to hone. They're so easy to hone, and out. they've got great, great geometry. Very yeah. cool. And this, these, this one also has a great PVD finish on the blade and handle, which I love. It's really great, solid look. So. Excellent. Yeah, that's what we got. All right, so this is, uh, you know, wave one of the uh, 2024 new Kershaw. Uh, of, of course, you can expect more stuff throughout the year yep. uh, to be hitting. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. We'll try to answer them. Maybe even, we'll even get uh, Andrew to pop into the comments, perhaps. Uh, and. Uh, You'll get the, the word from him instead of us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, thanks for sticking around. Uh, if you want to get your hands on these, like I said, these should be available right now. So you can check the links in the description of this video. Andrew, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Always good thank to you have, your, uh, have you around here. Take us through the new stuff. Cheers. See ya.